Finally! After finishing my review for Stickerstar, it was tough to think of the next game I wanted to review. Preferably a game that doesn't make me go insane. It took forever to think of a title, but I was a fool, for the answer to my endless journey was right in front of me. Genshin Impact is told to be one of the greatest games of 2020, and many even deem it to be better than one of the top selling Nintendo Switch games, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Many people love the game while others loathe it, but the real question is what I think of it. Here's a hint. <laughs> After playing the game for a long time now and being a dedicated player and member in the fandom, it's time for me to give my say on the best game of 2020, Genshin Impact. During the year of 2020, we were given some pretty solid games and content. Animal Crossing New Horizons, Doom Eternal, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Ori and the Will of the Wisps are just a few of the marvelous monarchs that took the world by storm. But the moment September strolled in, every piece of social media was advertising and talking about the newest free-to-play game, Genshin Impact, made by the Chinese development team, MiHoYo. Fun fact, development for Genshin actually started in July of 2017 with an initial team of 120 people, which then grew to 400 by the end of that year, and has actually reached up to 700 at the time of making this video. Within the first four days of being launched on mobile, PC, and PS4, the game had already gained 17 million downloads. And get this, that number was for mobile users only. And in the first two weeks alone, Genshin Impact made over, and I'm not joking when I say this, 100 million dollars in revenue that is insane. You released a free-to-play game and within the first few days of said release, 17 million people are playing it. That is just baffling. And I love it so much. I want to state this right now. Yes, there is a story to Genshin Impact. The game starts off with two twins wandering around in a heavenly-like world before being interrupted by an unknown god. No, that's actually her name. After choosing one of the two twins, I chose Lumine because she's freaking adorable, the other twin gets absorbed by the unknown god's newest collection of obsidian blocks and immediately wipes the floor with you. Oh, um, by the way, the male twin is named Aether and the female one is Lumine, okay? Okay. This was all a flashback, however, and we are actually in the world of Tavat, in the country known as Mondstadt. With a helpful companion and an obvious emergency food Paimon, you are now on a quest to search for and reunite with your dear sibling. Pretty simple story, right? Well, just like any game, there's going to be a lot of other storylines thrown in so the game won't feel so linear. I could talk about the character quests, but those are more for lore than story. So here we have the Archon quests. Quests are given to you so you can learn more about the world you are in, as well as unravel the secrets of it too. The first quest features a bard named Venti, trying to restore the bond he once had with his dear dragon friend Devalin, who had become corrupted by the Wicked Abyss Order, and was renamed to Storm Terror. The second Archon quest presents us to the country of Liyue, whose guard was struck down and killed. Accompanied by a new character and obvious simp material Zhongli, we find clues and talk to the locals about what they've known about Morax's demise. It isn't until you reach the Golden House and clash blades with the 11th Fatui Harbinger, Child Tartaglia, when everything crumbles before your very eyes. Now, with the ancient godly demon that is Osayo, Overlord of the Vortex, released, you must team up with the Liyue Chising to take down and defeat Osayo once and for all. Holy shit. That is awesome. And to think, there are two other Archon quests after those, with the latest one revealing that the other twin has been working for the Abyss Order this whole time, and that the people of the Abyss are actually people who were corrupted and turned into monsters during the fall of the ancient civilization, Conria. I, um, this is great. 
I haven't played a game in so long where the story grips me so hard, it makes side B Bowser and Grab Obsessed Incineroars look pathetic. I absolutely adore all the creativity and lore that went into the story. It's even gotten to the point that I'm theorizing what's going to happen next. When a game makes you do that, you know it's doing something right. Or incredibly wrong, depending on what you do. I'm gonna make this clear right from the very beginning. The gameplay in Genshin is some of the most fun I've ever had in a game. Period. Let's start off with the basic gameplay. Right from the start you are taught how to jump, jog, swim, climb, run, and attack. Swimming, climbing, and jumping uses up stamina. If you don't have enough stamina when climbing, you're gonna fall. If you don't have enough when swimming, you're gonna freaking drown. Almost akin to Breath of the Wild. You'll also consume stamina if you choose to use a charged attack with your character, so be mindful of that. There are five different weapon types you can choose from, those being swords, claymores, bows, polearms, and catalysts. Each have their own pros and cons, and multiple characters have a weapon they prefer. For example, the main character you play as prefers to use a sword, while other characters such as Amber or Ganyu like to go for a more ranged approach to combat and use bows. Along the weapons are the seven elements you can use. The elements are Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, Electro, Animo, and Geo. There is also Dendro, but at the time of recording, there is no character you can play as that can use the element. In addition to these elements, you are also able to combine elements and create elemental reactions. Combine Cryo with Hydro, you get Freeze. Animo with any element except Geo, you cause Swirl. Or just go ahead and use Electro and Hydro and watch your enemies shock to death with Electro Charged. The number of team compositions you can make that focus on one certain reaction or multiple is outrageous. Be a modern day cop and go for a taser comp. Maybe go full unga bunga and use OP melt and vaporize teams. Or you can try and channel your inner earthbender and make a full geo team. Hmm? What's the downside? Well, you can only have 4 characters on a team, but even with that number, there's still a lot of things you can do with a team. Sadly, on your first go around in Genshin, the best team you can make would be with the main character, Amber, and the other two characters you get for free, Kaya and Lisa. How do you get other characters you may ask? Well... Let's do this. Yeah, if you don't know, Genshin Impact is a gacha game. What is a gacha game, you may ask? Well, to put it blunt, it's basically gambling. You pay real world currency so you can purchase in game currency, which you can then use to purchase summons, or wishes in this case, so you can roll on the banner and hopefully get some strong 4 star characters or even the rare, powerful 5 star characters. Every two weeks or so, there's a new event banner with a new event exclusive character. These characters are only available during these banners, and if you don't get them, they're either gonna come back very much later, or never coming back at all. And the rates for getting a 5 star start at a pretty low rate, with only 0.6%. However, the more you wish on the banners, the more the rate decreases until you hit your 76th roll. Yes! Oh, there we go! This is where the pity system comes in and shoots your chance of getting a 5 star all the way up to 20.6%. Though that's mainly on the 70 to 80 area. Damn! Most people who play Genshin aren't going to get there during the first few minutes of the game with what little wishes they had, so that's where the in game store comes in, and well, let's just say your bank account will become non existent. I will state that I have spent my fair share of money on Genshin and, you know what, I'm proud of it. I have amazing units such as Albedo, Dai Luke, Xiao, and number one best boy Tartaglia. It makes me very happy. Though, you better have everything ready for that character, cause if you don't, you're going to have to grind for materials to level up your characters, level up your characters talents which make your moves much better and stronger get the right ascension materials for both the character and their weapon, 
and the thing that brings pain to all Genshin players, artifact hunting. This segment is already long as it is, so I'm going to try and simplify this. Getting items such as artifacts, items that give you character stat boost depending on how many of a certain set you put on and the stats each artifact have, weapon ascension materials, talent ascension materials, more money, and experience books to level up your characters, and even claiming rewards from bosses, all cost resin. Resin powers up these blossoms that appear after defeating a boss, or the trees that I swear look more dead than the Spyro franchise. After spending a certain amount of resin, a small cutscene happens and you get your reward. You're also able to craft condensed resin, which double the rewards you get from domains and ley lines. Not bad, right? Yeah, um, no. You see, you only have but so much resin to spend. Only 160 to be exact. Once you use all your resin, you're gonna have to either spend Primo Gems, the currency you use to make wishes, use the rare to acquire fragile resin, or wait a total of 16 to 18 real world hours for your resin to recharge. This sucks. So much. Do you know how much pain I was in when I finished fighting Boreas, sighing in relief as I went to go claim my reward, only to find out I didn't have enough resin to get it? It hurts. Stings, even. And honestly, this is the only bad thing about the gameplay I can think of. Everything else, combat, controls, and yeah, even the gacha system, are all swollen great. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that stings. That fucking stings! Alright, time for me to geek out some more. The game already won me over with a compelling story and amazing gameplay. But this is where Genshin shines. This is also where people can't help but make the famous comparison to Breath of the Wild. Gorgeous open world, gliding across the skies, battling and defeating enemies. Yeah, I can see it. But I'm about to say something that will probably kill half of my subscriber count. I think Genshin Impact is better than Breath of the Wild. Uh-oh. As I was saying. Yeah, that's right, I said it. I think Genshin looks, sounds, and feels better than Breath of the Wild. I personally feel like some of the colors for the landscapes in Breath can be a bit on the grimy side, and while I do like some of the music, a lot of the soundtracks are pretty forgettable. With Genshin, everything is full of color and pops out. Mountains, flowers, monsters, animals, fire, did I mention the water looks freaking beautiful? I love the enemy designs, with a special shout out going to Lupus Boreas, Wolf King of the North. The body shape, those glowing eyes, his mane, and his second phase are all so cool looking. Did I forget to mention the music is freaking phenomenal? Songs such as Glazed Moon Over the Tides, City of Winds and Idols, Snowberry Tales, Chilin's Prance, and Letter from Ajax will have you lost in their harmonic majesty as well as grab you by the neck with its notes and mercilessly drag you into the unknown yet majestic world. And then adrenaline pumping battle songs pop out of nowhere and lay the smack down on you. Chasing the torrents, Photon of Fluctuation, Calestinum Finale Tamini, Symphony of Boreal Wind, and Delusion Unleashed will hold nothing back as they barrage your very eardrums with symphonic greatness and orchestral magnificence that will give you an audible orgasm. Just listen. Yeah, I love this soundtrack so much! Oh, and don't think I forgot about the characters. There are so many characters that have so much personality, lore, and designs that, honestly, I like all of them. Even characters like Lisa and Amber, who may not be the best gameplay-wise, I still like them a lot for their personalities and designs. By far, number one best character has to be Tartaglia. Amazing design, sick gameplay, awesome voice acting, 
and sporting such an asshole and snarky attitude, you forget that he actually has a soft side too. All I can say is just... Wow. Bravo. If it wasn't clear, then hand me your screen so I can make it. I really, really like Genshin Impact. From a free-to-download game I got and never touched, to now something I look at and say, this is amazing. You can see just how much effort and work went into every drop of water, every blade of grass, and every note being played. If it wasn't for the whole issue of resin and grinding for materials, this game would be my number one favorite game. Yes, it is a gacha game, but you know what? It's a fun gacha game. A very fun one. I hate how so many people dislike the game without having played it or just say, it's just gacha Breath of the Wild. If you took the time to immerse yourself in the world and learn more about it as you play, you'll see that this game is one of the only free to play games that is going to stay for a long time. With that in mind everyone, it is with great honor and pride that I give Genshin Impact a very solid and firm 9.5 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching and sticking through this video. It takes a lot of time to make these vids while balancing school and such, so some of, if not most of these reviews will take a bit of time to come out. Still, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and comment down below if you would try out Genshin Impact or what you thought about it. If you liked what you saw, why not go ahead and subscribe, as well as hit the bell to be notified as to when my next video comes out. Oh, also make sure to join my Discord server and follow me on Twitter to get sneak peeks on what my next video will be. Links down in the description. My name is Shade Midnight. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe and stay fresh. See ya.